Today we delve into the Old Testament, specifically the final chapters of the Book of Judges, to revisit the Bible story of an innocent woman who was sacrificed by her partner to the hands of a mob so they could lustfully abuse her. If you think this is grim, it is only the beginning. More disturbing events are yet to come. With the Bible guiding us into the darkness of human nature, we will journey from one grim event to another. Before we start, we will issue a caution. While this video's language and visuals are safe, the story is shocking. But rest assured, you will emerge transformed, thanks to the valuable lessons the Bible will teach us through this story. This is the Bible story of the Levite and his concubine. In the remote hills of Ephraim lived a Levite and his concubine, a woman from Bethlehem in Judah. The couple's life was far from perfect, marked by the Levite's unspoken resentment about his concubine's unfaithfulness. One day, the concubine left the Levite, seeking refuge at her father's house. Four long months passed, and the Levite set out to bring her back. We don't know if his motives were love or loneliness. He took his servant and two donkeys and traveled to Bethlehem. His goal was to persuade her to return. When he arrived at her parents' home, his concubine welcomed him inside. Her father, seeing the Levite at the door, greeted him with warmth and hospitality. The Levite's heart softened a little at this kindness. The woman's father, pleased to see the Levite, insisted he stay with them. The Levite stayed for three days, and on the fourth day he prepared to leave. But his father-in-law urged him to stay longer. As evening approached, the father-in-law pleaded, Please stay tonight and enjoy yourself. For four days, each time the Levite prepared to leave, his father-in-law delayed him, offering food and companionship. We don't know whether the father's attempts were due to how sacred hospitality was during those times, or if it was due to growing concerns about his daughter's fate. But the grim events that would happen next, let us suppose that it's a mix of both. As the sun set on that fifth day, the Levite's determination grew. Despite the father-in-law's attempts to delay him for another day, the Levite was now resolute. He prepared to take his concubine and continue their journey, resolute to start a new beginning in their relationship. Little did he know he was taking her to the end. As dusk began to settle, the Levite, his concubine, and a servant made their way toward the city of Jebus, also known as Jerusalem. They had been traveling all day, driven by the man's urgency to reach their destination. The day was slipping away fast, shadows lengthening across the road. Near Jebus, with the sun casting its final golden rays, the servant spoke up. Come, let's stop at this city of the Jebusites and spend the night, he suggested. But the Levite, aware of the dangers of being a stranger in a foreign city, shook his head. No, we won't go into any city whose people are not Israelites. We will go on to Gibeah, he insisted. Come, let's try to reach Gibeah or Ramah and spend the night in one of those places. The journey continued under the fading light. The road grew darker and the chill of night began to settle in. As they approached Gibeah in the territory of Benjamin, the sun had already set. Weariness pulled at them. They entered the city and went to the square hoping someone would offer them hospitality, but there was no welcoming sign in sight and no one stepped forward to take them in. Just as despair was setting in, an old man approached. He was returning from his work in the fields. He noticed the weary travelers and their abandoned expressions. Where are you going? Where did you come from? He asked, his voice kind but curious. The Levite replied, we are on our way from Bethlehem in Judah to a remote area in the hill country of Ephraim where I live. No one has taken me in for the night. Luckily for the Levite, the old man was originally from Ephraim but lived in Gibeah. He nodded. You are welcome at my house, he said warmly. Let me supply whatever you need, only don't spend the night in the square. Relief washed over the travelers. 
they followed the old man to his home. Inside, they settled in for a simple meal, their hearts lightened by the old man's generosity. As the night wore on, the travelers were enjoying a brief moment of respite inside the old man's house. Suddenly, the peace was shattered by a loud, insistent pounding on the door. The sound of harsh voices rose, filled with menace and wicked intent. A group of the city's wicked men had surrounded the house. Bring out the man who came to your house so we can have sex with him, they shouted. The old man, owner of the house, went outside to confront them. No, my friends, don't be so vile. Since this man is my guest, don't do this outrageous thing, he pleaded. But the evil man of the city was determined to take the Levite. For those of you who have read the Bible story of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, this scene will sound familiar. When a mob demanded Lot to deliver the messengers of God, do you remember what Lot had offered in response? In his desperation to protect his guests, Lot offered his own daughters. In today's story, the old man was going to take a similar approach. As he was trying to save the visitor's honor, he suggested, Look, here is my virgin daughter and his concubine. I will bring them out to you now and you can use them and do whatever you wish. But as for this man, don't do such an outrageous thing. While such a negotiation is certainly horrifying for us, modern viewers, it still teaches us about the harsh realities men, but certainly women, had to survive during those past times. Women were often regarded as property, and their sacrifice was seen as an acceptable means to preserve the honor of men. It also underscores the sacred duty of hospitality, where a host was bound to protect his visitors at any cost. In the middle of this traumatizing scene, and as the old man was still trying to find a solution, the Levite committed a terrifying act. He took his concubine and sent her outside to the mob. The wicked men seized her, and throughout the night, they raped and abused her. The scene was atrocious, grim, and disgusting. It was not until dawn that they finally let her go. At daybreak, the woman, barely alive, made her way back to the house where the Levite was staying. She fell down at the door and lay there until daylight. When the Levite opened the door, he found the poor woman lying in the doorway of the house, her hands on the threshold. With a cold voice, probably due to denial or the trauma of his action, he commanded, get up, let's go but the concubine would never answer. Realizing she was dead, the Levite put the concubine on his donkey and set out for home. As he traveled back, he was formulating a plan. The plan was so dark that it would drive the entire country into civil war, cause the lives of innocent children, and turn the lives of many young women into a tragedy. Once home, the Levite took his concubine and put her dead body on a table. He was not thinking about a proper burial or cremation. Instead, he took a knife and, with grim determination, cut up his concubine limb by limb into twelve parts and sent each part to a different region of Israel. As the parts reached the twelve tribes of Israel, the Levite initiated one of the most terrifying wars the Bible tells us about. In the next video, we continue the grim story of the Civil War.